today uh, we're targeting staging coho salmon. So um, they're just getting ready to come up the rivers to spawn. It's mid-August right now. And uh, this time of year, you know, early August, we'll start getting our kings and coals. They'll come back to the mouths of these rivers and they'll start staging to spawn. Uh, our best salmon fishing, usually in May when they first start heading up the lake, but uh, then it kind of gets slow, usually mid-June. Fish will go to the Wisconsin side a lot, then usually late July, early August, they'll start migrating back to uh, to the west side of Michigan here and getting ready to come up these rivers. So we're going to be uh, trolling primarily today. Uh, we've had a couple days of north wind prior to this, so the fish are kind of scattered. They're all over. It slowed down a little bit. Um, usually when we get those just stable south winds, consistent weather, you know, it'll set up fishing. And uh, But yeah, we had a couple, fishing was awesome up to this, and we had a couple days of north wind, so it kind of slowed things down a little bit. Look at all the marks. It's game on. Okay, so the fish are starting to roll in. Oh my gosh. We're getting the rods ready, and as soon as the sun comes up over, the horizon here in beautiful northern Michigan, it's about to go off. I'm not sure you could ask for a better scene than this. Welcome to Lake Michigan here, where we're getting ready to chase coho and Chinook salmon. The bite should happen any minute now as the sun starts to come up. Good conditions? <laughs> we're about to get them. Now we're... Ooh. Oh, he's jumping, baby! <laughs> Woo! Oh, you were. Nice coal. First fish out in the morning. Let's get him in the boat. Pod rolled through, dude. <laughs> Our lines went through the pod and slap! Oh, yeah. Close your mouth. <laughs> Here we go. Water ski time. Get ready. Ski him in, dude. Don't you dive on me, you're done. Yo, he's all over, man. Don't you dive on me. No, no. Have we wrapped another line? Yo! First fish of the morning, baby. Nice coho. Smack the spoon. All right, sun is coming up over the horizon and we are hooked up. Bro, toss one in the box, shut the cooler, and wow! <laughs> <laughs> nice one. First coho ever, right after sunrise, and uh, it's looking like a pretty good day out here. Got a uh, third fish on in the morning here. Pretty good morning so far. Just had that, had that sun come up over the horizon. Start biting for us. Ooh, I'm not kidding. Same thing again. Toss the fish in the box, close the lid. Oh! <laughs> yeah, I can. Try to. Yeah, baby, another chunk. It's a nice four or five pound coal here. This is a little smaller than the average size we've been catching, but a uh, common fish. It's a nice, good colored chrome. Have some great meat on them still. So it's uh, got a few in the box. So good morning so far. So for, a, so for my downrigger rod here, I have a Lama Glass, classic glass, it's an 8 to, um, eight to 20 pound. It's a good rod, it loads up nice on the downriggers. Um, and like I said, we're gonna be running spoons on them. In the mornings, we'll be running a lot of glows, and as the sun comes up, we'll switch to mostly, you know, a lot of chromes, uh, even all chromes with some chartreuses, maybe a little, uh, maybe a little yellow in there, but chartreuse has been the best color for us lately. Um, so we'll run these, you know, we'll put the spoon back about 70, 100 feet behind that downrigger ball, then put it down um, anywhere from late, today we've been fishing 50 to about 70, 80 down. So um, yeah, about 50 feet behind, 50 to 100 feet behind the downrigger ball, put them down to the depth. And uh, then yeah, when that fish bites, you know, it just snaps off the ball there. And then on our divers, we're gonna be running meat on our divers, uh, meat rigs. So I'll show you what that looks like. Uh, I got an E-chip flasher here. And this is a, uh, with this meat rig, um, I have it tied up. We'll slide the slide the band up a little bit, then we'll, we're uh, running some fire dyed herring strips here. And uh, we're also be putting the her herring gel on them as well. So it's pretty straightforward. You just put your meat inside the head, then you'll put a toothpick inside the slot to hold your meat in there, then you'll just trim this off. Uh, then yeah, so then when you're fishing, this meathead's just gonna be back behind, just 
rolling and your flashers are gonna extend then you get your teasers on there. And I like to run these, my favorite oh, setup to run these on is a diver. So we'll run these on our Dipsy divers. I run wire divers and we'll put them back either, anywhere from 150 to about two, 250 has been our good numbers lately. So we're running these TX22 church boards. These are, these are my favorite boards to run and we'll just send them way out spread things out and planer boards are nice because they allow us to run a lot of lines and spread things out so we can cover all different depths of the water column so we'll put our shallowest lines on our outside boards and we'll put our deepest lines on the insides so when you get a fish on the outside theoretically it comes across the inside without getting tangled turn around here got another fish on uh, kind of had a little little lull this morning we had a decent morning bite going but uh north wind we had a pretty good north wind last night it kind of blew things around so we came back out this afternoon and we're just getting started and get some fish going here. <laughs> Reel that thing in like it's a chicken sandwich. I'm hungry. Reel that thing in. Chicken sandwich, just a little, little bit of ranch. Little one. No pickles though. No, it's all right. What do we got? All right, so very good. All right, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go. Little blue. <laughs> got him. Woo! It's actually this uh, little two-year-old king here. Pick these up with the coal every now and again. Uh, yeah, just a good little, good little table fare king. It's a good fish, dude. Oh. Yeah! Like, did you see that thing? I was like, oh, somebody gonna get that? Shafe with the call out again, dude. You get ready for the next ride, big boy. Ah! 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 Oh yeah. Right here. Put it in the fish roll. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, oh it's yeah. a nice one. Oh, yeah. It's a nice one. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Take your time. Take your time. Slider it's a good diet. one, dude. Oh. <laughs> Kyle, hit the red button. You got it? Dude, it's a good one. Is that a coho? Cohicular baby! Is that a coho? Yeah! <laughs> Tank! Tank! <laughs> We're just chilling in a wall. Slider biter goes railing on the downrigger. Oh, yeah, dude, it's a good one. So we talked about uh, how we're using fire gel here today. And what this is, is it's Potsky's herring fire gel. And uh, so all I'm going to do here is I'm just going to take this hook. And this will actually stay on for quite some time. Um, you, you'll be able to even smell it after fishing for quite a while. So I'm just going to dip that hook right in the fire gel just like that. And you're good to go. And it's a great way to... Um, I like to wash my hands and kind of wash the baits at the end of the day. I'm kind of big on scent, especially out here because a lot of times you have fish follow your follow your baits for quite some time and um, just those little little details can play a big difference, especially when you get a lot of boats out here. He's determined. Come on, Rocky. Get the rhythm down, that's for sure. I think it's a big colo. Dude, I'm gonna watch the butter on this assist I'm about to get. Well, look at this. I'm geared up, ready to go. You can't see it yet, can you? No, nope, it's staying down. Yeah, it yeah. is like, just down. It's something decent for sure. I see it right there, dude. I see something. Oh, it's a Larry! It's a lake, it's a lake trout. George just picked up this nice laker here. Uh, this is about seven, eight pounds, uh, about the average size lake trout we see. I spend the majority of the months, it's early summer months, jigging these, but uh, we'll pick them up trolling as well. This is the Mackinac strain. You can tell by its bright orange fins, and these, this strain of lake trout just says great, great meat, nice orange meat. They make for uh, some great table fare. Well, that's the first time I've touched a rod since what, Alaska? <laughs> I'll tell you what, this is the first time I've seen you hold a rod. <laughs> you never see it again. That's what happens when the bike gets good. Even I get to catch one. Oh! Dude, where's it going? Where's it going? <laughs> what do you got to say about that, dude? He's coming all the way to Frankfurt. <laughs> all right, Peter, he won't come. Dude, he's coming all the way to Frankfurt. All right, he woke up. Maybe it's not a lake trap. Oh no. oh no, dude, lost oh. all your line, dude. This is, come on down. You saw Kyle's Potsky head, it took off. 
What do we got on this? A spoon? with yeah, herring? This is a spoon. Yeah, this yep. is herring fire gel. Yep. Sweet. What's weird is the, the bait has not got touched tonight. No. No. But the herring fire gel has been, been really good. Kyle, 26. Okay. Oh, he's right in the zone, dude. Oh, yeah, nice. Oh, he the No. No way. No. No way. Oh, Larry! No way. I can't see it. That, I haven't seen a lake trout fight like that. Oh, Come on, that dude. <laughs> Another nice laker. Uh, this was on a free slider on a downrigger. It was about 100 down. Free slider is probably going about 40, 50 feet down and uh, had the herring gel on there. So, picking away at him. So this is our fire dyed herring strip here. Uh, I, I have it in fire dye. I like to use the fire dye just because it's quick and easy. Um, I put this, I put it in about 20 minutes before we started fishing this morning and it took its color great. So it's just quick and easy. And after after I run a piece of bait, I'll put it on the hook and you know run it for quite some time. Then at the end of the day, I'll, I like to put it in a bag and just kind of coat it with natural Braxel fire. I've just found that that uh, works well just to kind of preserve the meat, especially if you know it's, you catch it sitting outside or gets a little warm that Braxel fire will kind of preserve it better. So um, that's my favorite way to do up my meat out here. Is it a king? Oh, it might be. I don't know. All right, all right. All right, all right. Nice fish. Let me fix the highlights. You notice Kyle gave me the rod when it was a lake trout, this one? Uh-uh, uh-uh. It might be a king. It might be a king. Oh, dude. Oh, it just jumped. It just jumped. Is, was it, was it uh, a silver fish? Yeah. It, oh, yes. Oh, so oh, he's gone. He's gone. Wow. Look at that. Nope, getting close. It's a nice fish. I don't know if it felt like a king at first. He took out a couple hundred feet of line, but if it's a coal, it's a big coal. It might be a you know, something that it's either one of the two oh. or it ain't no laker. Yeah. You're fine. Just watch my head. Is it a king? Yeah, it's a king. Oof. We'll take him. <laughs> I had to get the board in right, there, but we, hey, got ooh, we got him. We got him. He's got a nice king here. Uh, this is a four-year-old king, a um, little bit on the smaller side from what we generally catch out of as far as four-year-olds go. This is about 10, 10, 12 pounds maybe, but uh, it's a nice, nice good looking fish. Um, out here swimming with these colds, so getting a, getting a mixed bag out here. Oh, we got a good evening bite going on here. We came out this morning for a couple hours, but didn't beat ourselves up too hard. The water is all mixed up. We had a hard north blow yesterday, so it scattered them and uh, took us a little while to get on them here. but. Had a good afternoon bite. I think we've got eight or nine coho in the box, a few lake trout, and a couple kings too. So, and you know what? We watch the sunrise and the sunset. Yep. And got a nice nap. <sighs> <laughs> Loud oh, mouth wow. out there. <laughs> and, we got, and we got a nice nap. <laughs> Looks like a coho or a small king. I can't tell you. We're about to oh, hopefully oh, find oh, out. Oh, easy, easy. Don't be talking smack, bro. Yeah, I started doubting him a little bit. Oh! Another coho fat. Is it a coho? Yeah. Oh, bro. Coho. Almost fumbled him. Another nice football coho here. Good eater. Uh, so it looks like a little hen. And uh, that was on a 300 foot copper line with a board. So, spoon with the herring gel. Today's episode of Ponsky Outdoors comes to you from Northern Michigan, where we're out here today with Kyle McClellan of XXL Chrome Jason. Now, this is the first time we have fished this open water here on the big lake. Uh, we're up near Frankfurt. Uh, this is near Sleeping Dunes National Seashore. Now, we couldn't get you guys real good drone footage of the seashore because it is against the law to fly a drone in the area. So we had to keep our drone, you know, we're a half mile to a mile out in Lake Michigan right now. You can see us pan towards it and see some absolutely beautiful country. A lot of people come here because the scenery is great, but they also come here because the coho fishing is even better. Some of the best coho fishing in all of Michigan happens right here. Now we're about oh, four and a half hours from Detroit, two and a half hours from the greater Grand Rapids area, and 45 minutes to an hour from Traverse City. And uh, this is some of the best fishing in the Great Lakes. Now, starts in July, goes into August, into early September, until these fish leave the bay here and head up into the rivers like they do everywhere along Lake Michigan's tributaries. Now, all of our fish today came on two baits. Early in the morning, we used meat rigs and spoons, and both of them did very well. Now, those meat rigs are done in chartreuse fire brine, added up with a little chartreuse fire dye, and I think Kyle even adds some Baraxa fire after he uses them to toughen them up for more. Now, 
The majority of the fish, I would say 90% of the fish today came on spoons coated in herring fire gel. Now, we had a lot of other flavors with us. We didn't even need to try them. The herring was working so well. And we had a great time out here today. We were able to come out and dodge winds. Now, early in the morning, we started before light. You'll see one of the best sunrises you've ever seen. We were out here at 5.30 in the morning waiting for it. We fished till about nine, got off, and came back about five o'clock and fished from five till dark. You can see we caught multiple species, a lot of lake trout. We caught, uh, well, two small feeder kings and then one better king. And then we also caught those elusive coho, but they weren't elusive today. We came out here today with these great baits with a guy that's dialed in and knows what he's doing. And we chose to go the, well, we call it more exciting route rather than get on a big charter boat uh, that uh, can't really slow down when you get those fish. We were able to slow down to nothing and feel those fish fight and had a great time here in Northern Michigan chasing salmon during the great summer months. Potsky products are available at sporting goods stores near you. If you can't find the specific color, size that you want, make sure to go to potsky.com. And as a thank you for watching Potsky Outdoors, we're going to show you a coupon code to be used for 10% off your next order. Yep, first coho ever. My first catch for a coho. We're out here in uh, Lake Michigan right after sunset. Sunrise, bro. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait, we go, we go. I, I up the first part. <laughs> redo, redo. Don't say, don't say first it's a nice little four, four or five pound coho. <laughs> It's nice. <laughs> it's nice four or five pound coal here. This is a little, little smaller than the average size we've been catching, but uh, oh. God damn it. This is nice four or five pound coal here. Uh, this is a little smaller. <laughs> Bro, I have never been. 